So I've got two goat hearts here. One of them has been opened up, the other one has not. And you can see the, this is situated as it would be from the left side of the animal so that the oracles are pointing towards you. Here we can see that the right ventricle is not just right but it's cranial. The left is not just left but it's caudal. The apex is in the left. We can see here where the right ventricle is coming up and narrowing down. That's known as a conus arteriosus. That makes this interventricular groove here the paraconal because it's adjacent para to the cone, conal interventricular groove. Okay, so the right ventricle is going to give rise to the pulmonary trunk after going through the pulmonary valves here. And you can see very nicely here we have a ligamentum arteriosum which in the fetus was the ductus arteriosus which shunted blood from the pulmonary trunk into the aorta so that we would bypass the lungs. Okay, so that's the aorta. So this is our brachiocephalic trunk coming off our aorta. Unlike the dog, we don't have that left subclavian coming off by itself in the large animal or our ruminants and horses, but we have a brachiocephalic trunk off which the left subclavian comes. A little bit later, the right subclavian will come off, and then there will be a bicarotid trunk that will give rise to both of the common carotid arteries. Okay. So if we come over here to the right side, we see the caudal vena cava and the cranial vena cava here coming together into the right atrium. Let's go ahead and open that up. So here's our oracle here. Up here is our cranial vena cava. And here's our caudal vena cava. And right in between them we have a ridge. This one isn't very prominent. But this is the intervenous tubercle, which is directing the blood down into the ventricle. Just caudal to that, this depression is the, the fossa ovalis, which was the foramen ovale in the fetus. Here we can see the carotid sinus, where the blood from the heart is emptying into the right side here. And just beneath that, we have another interventricular groove, and that is our subsinuosal because it is under the coronary sinus, so subsinuosal interventricular groove. And our coronary vessels, I don't know if we can find them on this specimen here, but our coronary vessels are going to be very similar to what we saw in the dog, that the left is going to come out, give off our periconal branch, continue as the circumflex branch, and then give rise to our subsinuosal branch, whereas the right just comes out and kind of peters off here as it gets towards the subsinuosal interventricular groove. So coronary vessels very much like what we saw in the dog. So right here is the left azygous vein coming down and it's going to dump right into that great cardiac vein at the coronary sinus. So the goat also has a right azygous so a zygous, which means unpaired, really isn't a good name for the goat or the ox. Okay, now we can look down into the right ventricle. That right ventricle, we've opened it up here. Let's open it up a little bit more. We can see nicely now the right atrioventricular valves. That is chordae tendinae. Got papillary muscles on which those chordae tendinae attach. This muscle here going from the septum out to the margin 
is the trabeculae septa marginalis. So this is going to be Purkinje fibers bringing the conduction out here. And then this area here that looks like a dog has chewed on it and there's been some carnage is trabeculae carnae. Okay, so that's the right ventricle. We then go up into the pulmonary trunk and there's the pulmonary valves again. Okay, so once again pulmonary trunk, ligamentum arteriosum, and it's going to give rise to our pulmonary arteries. Remember, this is deoxygenated blood, but it's in arteries because it's going away from the heart. Okay, then on the left side we have multiple pulmonary veins coming in here. This is going to be oxygenated blood coming into the left atrium. Here's the left auricle. Somewhere up in here we might find a flap of tissue. Yep, right here. This flap of tissue right here is the valve of the foramen ovale. Okay? So then we have the left atrioventricular valves with their chordae tendinae. Papillary muscles aren't usually quite so prominent here in the left side. We also have our trabeculae septa marginalis, which are those Purkinje fibers. And not so much of the trabeculae carnae in this specimen. Okay, so that was a good little goat heart 